Hello everyone, Joe DiCiara here, KVIS Advisory Board member and co-director of certification. We're here today to bring you a video on how to digitize with your new 6D system. If you don't already know what digitizing is, it's a simple act of gaining anatomically correct information about your player. It's important because it's going to make the data you collect more relevant to that actual player. So before we get started, we're going to go through two quick system setup features that are important to do each and every time you're going to capture data with a player. The first is the location of the USB receiver in relationship to the player. So as you can see behind me, I have my receiver hanging directly from my source box between the source box and the player. The other thing that's important is the location of the hub on the pelvis garment itself. So if Sevi would turn around for me, you can see that I have the hub located about four inches to the right of the actual pelvis sensor on the garment over that trail hip. Thank you, Sevi. These two locations are important because it's going to keep constant communication between the hub and the receiver throughout the motion. So once you have these two areas set, you're going to go forward and you're going to start your digitizing process. The way we do that is we're going to start at the home screen and go into our live capture mode. Once you're in your live capture mode, you're going to see four buttons across the top right of your screen. You're going to have calibrate, you're going to have set address, you're going to have digitize, and you're going to have capture. Okay, we're going to start by calibrating, and this is the same procedure that you would do with your normal 3D system if you already have one of those. So we're going to set SEVI up in relationship to a golf club or a rod on the ground, something that you want to calibrate them to. So from there, he's going to hold the golf club across his waist and stand in a normal neutral position. What this will do is it will set the torso and pelvis sensors into a neutral position before we start to digitize the actual joints. So from there we're going to go ahead and click calibrate and then once you do that you'll see that the, the avatar on your screen will snap into position. This is exactly the same as the way it does in your 3D system. So once we do that we're now ready to start our digitizing process. What you need to do next is you need to locate your digitizing pen. I've got mine right here in my pocket and then we're going to use the actual hand sensor as the sensor to digitize the joints. So the way we do this is we're going to take that hand sensor and we're going to slip it right into the top of your digitizing pen. Okay, once you do that, you can go ahead and click the digitize button at the top right of your screen. It'll prompt you and ask you if you're sure you want to go into digitize and you're going to say yes. Once you're in the digitizing portion of your software, you'll have pictures and descriptions to progress you through this entire process. Once you calibrate this pen and start the digitizing process, the great thing that KVEST has done is they've automated this process so that you don't have to go back over to your computer at all to click a mouse button or to progress it to the next joint. So basically we, we've made digitizing fun, fast, and easy to do so that you can start capturing motions with your players very quickly. So to calibrate this pen, we take it and we position it in a horizontal position pointed towards the player with the wire connection facing the sky. So from there I'll have my player actually hold that in position in front of them while I go to the computer and click calibrate digitizing pen. Once you do that you're going to see the digitizing pen snap into position. What I do is I'll move this pen around and I'll test to make sure as I'm moving it if it matches on my screen. If it does, you're good to start digitizing. So you're going to have the pen facing the sky so it's out of the range of acceptable digitizing and you're going to click start digitize. Once you do this, the first joint that you actually digitize is the right AC. So you're on the right hand side of the player and once over here you're going to take this pen and position it right over the bump on that shoulder. Okay, I recommend in between doing this, actually taking the pen and pointing it straight up at the sky so that you don't mistakenly digitize an area that you don't want to. 
Note how we heard three beeps and a ding, and then it progressed us to the next joint. This is that automated process to take you through this entire procedure. So now that we've done the right AC, we're going to move on to the left AC. Okay, once we're done with the left AC, we move to left front of shoulder. Once the left front of shoulder is done, I prompt the player to get into what I call a ski pole position with their elbows on their side and their forearms pointed horizontally out in front of them. I'll then locate the center back of this left elbow. Once I do that, we go to left center wrist. Once left center wrist is done, we move down and calibrate the three points on the pelvis. The first one is the left IC. So the iliac crest is located just above the belt. It's a bony structure just above the pant line. So now if you move straight down the leg, usually right in line with their, their seam on the side of their pants, we're going to locate the left GT. Now an easy way to do this is if a player will take their toe and move their foot around in a circular position, circular rotation, the bony point that moves is that GT that we want to digitize. So once I find that, I'm going to go ahead and digitize the left GT. Okay, once that's done, I move on to my last point. I'll move around to the right-hand side of the golfer and do the right GT. Okay, so now you can see how fast and easy that digitizing process was. We're done. It's going to ask you if you'd like to save these digitizing points, and you're going to say yes. So from there... I'm going to go ahead and take the hand sensor out of the digitizing pen. The way to do this is important. You want to push on the opposite side of where the wire connects into the sensor so it slides out of the pen. Don't ever pull on the wire to get this sensor out of the pen because if this connection is disrupted, it's going to cause data disruption in all of your captures. So once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and put this right back on Sevi's shoulder. And the next thing we need to do is we need to take this hand sensor and secure it to that lead hand. So the first thing I'm going to have the player do is grab his golf glove. Okay? And once you put your adhesive tape onto the back side of this sensor, you're going to go ahead and have the player open their glove up and position this sensor right in the middle of back of their hand. From there, you're going to take the glove and stretch it back over the sensor, securing the Velcro so that that sensor is secured in the center of their hand with the wire going straight up their wrist. Once we've done that, we're going to take our straps, and the first one is going to secure to the forearm of the player. The second strap is going to secure the wire to the upper arm of the player. Finally, what I like to do now is make sure that each seg segment of the wire has a little bit of slack to it so there's no pull when the player takes a swing. And now finally we're ready to complete our process. So as we calibrate it in the first segment, we're going to recalibrate but now with that hand sensor in its proper position. So Sebi's going to get back into the calibrating position neutral posture, and we're going to go ahead and click calibrate again. Now you can see that he snapped back into position, but the hand sensor is not yet, the hand avatar, I should say, is not yet in position rel relative to his body. So what we need to do next is the final step, which is set address. So I'll tell the player to go ahead and take their address position, get comfortable however they would hit a shot, 
And then once in that position, I click set address. Once we do that, the avatar of the hand and club will snap into position relative to the body so it's accurate as if it were real life. And now we're ready to go ahead and start capturing. Thank you, Sevi. So once you do all these steps, now you can go ahead and click capture as if you uh, were to do that with your 3D system. You're going to do it the same way with your 6D system. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you in getting your 6D system up and running and able to capture some motions of your players as quickly as possible. Thank you very much.